This is the big bend of biological clocks. Absolutely. Absolutely it is. It is. It's interesting that way, isn't it? <laughs> and you know, when I was, con when I was thinking, okay, I'm going to just go ahead and write this book about my own experiences in Burma and on the Thai-Burma border, my agent wasn't really thrilled and my, the publisher wasn't fully convinced either. But I thought, no, I have a lot of material already written. I'd written a lot of essays that had been published in different places. And, and I also have this story that I want to talk about. And in my mind, I thought that the whole question about fertility and having children and with whom to have children, I thought it was a bit put on. I thought I was making that up because I had just had a child when I started working on this book. But in fact, I was really shocked when I reread my journals, which of course I was keeping there on a daily basis, because it, it, it wasn't put on. It wasn't kind of made up or influenced by my present life. It was, a real, it was a real theme. It was a real discussion. It was very active. And that was because of being on the border. And Again, it was biology. Witnessing a lot of death and the, the death of children, particularly the incredible vulnerability of children, Something weird happens to a lot of people, and they have their a biological imperative kicks in. It's like we must have a baby. <laughs> we must have a baby to off put this this tragedy, this death, the death of children. That's what happened to me. How many years ago? This was all taking place in 1997. So really. more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. And you can sit back mm -hmm. and and make sort of editorial decisions, but you don't. You let yourself look bad, frankly, at times. Um, how, how hard is that as a writer? Oh, trust me, Craig, I could have looked worse. <laughs> I could have looked worse. I mean, surely the, I'm allowed some editorial uh, leeway with my own telling. I mean, that's what we do in memoir. We, we choose what we tell. But think of good old Orwell, George saying that a writer is not to be trusted unless he reveals something disreputable about himself. <laughs> Which is absolutely true. I mean, you, you know, the, the, the things that make us human and really most interesting tend to be those things that, they're, they're not always the things that, that show us in our weakness. Sometimes they're the things that show us in our strength. But, but it's, it's, it's never just one or the other. It has to be both of those things. And, you know, writing the memoir, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I wrote it in present tense. I thought about, okay, I can bring in my perspective. You know, one of the classic and very fascinating things about modern memoirs as we usually write them now is that they have that quality. Many beautiful memoirs have that quality of the the writer kind of looking down through the, through the depths of the water so that they're in the position they are now on dry land and that you know about that dry land position, but then you also know about these various other depths. So the childhood and the moment, the, the now of the story, and then a slightly, you know, a later time after that, and then the now of the writer writing in their present wisdom and strength. And there was some, I, I was, I, I did think about writing that kind of book, but I wanted the book to be about Burma and about the border. So I did want it, besides my own personal story, I did want it to be a book of witness and a book about these places and what people experience there and how they suffer and how they sometimes overcome these traumas that, that they face on a regular basis and these difficulties on all sides. And so to do that, well, there had, to be, there had to be that sense of world in the book. And I didn't want to continually break that world by talking about my own personal story too much. I mean, obviously, the personal is an engine in this book in a crucial way. But all the other things, the political things and the act of witness around all of that is also really important. I mean, that's what the Burmese lessons were also, right? I, I hand people a copy of, of Lizard Cage and I say, okay, please believe me, it's a long, dark tunnel <laughs> that is so worth going down because the, the bright light at the end, well, because, I mean, it's, you know, it is... It's a tough book. It's a tough book. And 
in some ways, reading this, I get the little little glimpses of where some of that stuff came from. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, there's a moment where you talk about it's like suddenly I, I have this image of this little boy and a prison and and a man and click. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do that because that, I mean, that obviously that's very conscious. But one of the reasons for that is is those 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 moments of realization about ah. Oh, this is this is something more than what it is. This has to be for as an artist, they're they're very powerful moments. So you see something, or you experience something, you have a conversation with someone, and you're kind of haunted by it as an artist because you feel like okay, there this is a key to something else. This is a key to to my to myself, to my own work, and and I I'm fascinated by those those moments. Why those moments happen as they do? Why we're why we're overtaken by them, why those moments are keys. So I did want to, uh, I did want to reveal that somehow, where some of the key images and ideas for the lizard cage came in. Because you know with that book how um, it's so important to me. It was such an important book for me and I think for Burma too in some ways that I continue living it in a way as I'm writing, as I wrote. Burmese lessons. So it was important to, I don't know, it was important to kind of give it a space as a, almost as a character in my own life. The book is Burmese Lessons, a love story. I've been speaking with Governor General Award winner Karen Connolly and Burmese Lessons, published by Random House of Canada.